Hi, hello, welcome to Devon Monk's Works and Worlds. We are on Monday Monk 91 because I wrote it down on a sticky note and now I know. <laughs> we are on Monday Monk 91. Thank you so much for joining me this week. It is great to see you here. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and cover what I usually cover, which is how is writing going, how is knitting going, and how are things in Monkland. Okay, writing is going very good. I have finished <laughs> I have finished the draft of Nursery Crimes. I'm going to read through it uh, one more time, especially the last half, which is where I've done the most uh, heavy lifting. Uh, but I uh, have finished the revision, which means that I will have a full book to be able to share over on my Patreon. I am sharing it one chapter a week over there. If you want to look for it, it's Devon Monk's Secret Cafe, and I'll put a link for it down below. And uh, so I'm so happy to actually get to the end of the story. I feel like it is much stronger. I removed something like 59,000 words, 58,000 words, which is, I, I said this before, a book's worth of book I took out of this book. And that meant characters were in the first book aren't in this book, or the first version of this aren't in this. Storylines that were in the first version aren't in this. Um, and it's stronger for it. Uh, it ended up being about a 50,000 word book. So, you know, I, I definitely, it was a lot, you know. it It's hard to count these kinds of things when you revise because you're cutting and you're adding and you're rearranging sentences and you're borrowing something that you used before in the original draft and then you're reworking it with something new. And, but you know, it was somewhere near 90,000 word manuscript when I began, 92,000, 93,000 word manuscript. Um, and I know I worked, it, it, it was a lot because I, I just wish there were a way to measure that, that kind of revision process, but there isn't a great way to tally it. Um, yeah, I did keep all the, most of the bits that I snipped out and wasn't going to use. I put them all in the, in a separate manuscript, which is why I know how many words I cut out because I just kept lobbing them over into this separate file, uh, in case I ever want to do something with those characters or those side plots. But, uh, for now we have, we have a nursery crimes and I'm very excited about it. Um, I think the tone shifts a little bit toward the end. I need to go in and make sure that I'm hitting all of my noir marks um, because I was just trying to get the plot figured out and all that stuff. So I'll go in and probably do a, a quick dab over it of, with some of that before it goes out to people on Patreon. But once again, I don't know what I'm doing with this book. It's going out on Patreon. I don't know what's going to happen other, after that. I don't know if I'm actually going to put it out in the world. It's a standalone. I don't write standalones and yet here it is. <laughs> so anyway, I'm excited because it was sort of an oddball project to take on toward the end of this year. And I thought I could, I always think that I could do it very quickly and just, you know, knock it out in a couple of weeks, it'll be ready. But then when I got into it, I really wanted to do it justice. And for me, that means slowing down a little bit and thinking out the plots and the characters and what the story can be and trying to move it as close as possible to that. And I, I feel like I got I did a pretty good job and I'm going to be interested to hear what other people think about it because it's very different than my other stuff. Anyway, okay, so yay, Nursery Crime is done. That means I actually get to start working on other uh, writing projects and I'm excited about that and um, I'm excited, excited about looking at 2024 and thinking about what I want to stack into releases for 2024 and I will keep you updated as I get that figured out. So writing is good, thank you. How is knitting going? You know, weirdly, knitting is also going good. I uh, finished a little uh, gifty for a uh, grandbaby, a little hat, and uh, it fits, so that's always good. <laughs> and uh, then I started right in on the next knit toy. It is already probably halfway done. This is a, it's knitting up really quick, which is fun. It's a silly knit toy. I'm hoping somebody will enjoy it and I'll probably get it done within the next, you know, week or two and then I'll be able to show it here on the channel. So keep your eyes peeled. Well, don't do that. That sounds very uncomfortable, but uh, keep an eye out for the knit toy that will be coming up. And of course it will be given away uh, at the end of no uh, November, at the end of December, because we're in December now. Uh, it will be given away in my newsletter. So if you aren't subscribed to my newsletter, do that. I like only send out one a month. It's not like I'm not like hounding you for anything. It's mostly just to let you know, hey, there's this knit toy you can get. And also I always put 
books uh, from author friends of mine that are either newly released or are on sale or something at the end of my newsletter. So I, you know, try to just uh, pass on some good reads if you're interested in them too. So, okay, that's that. Uh, then we're just on into what is going on in Monkland. Well, Monkland is good, but wet. We have had five inches of rain in the last four days. It, <laughs> we are really getting the rain. And uh, the way that our house is situated, it, and we have a basement, um, it can flood. And we've had it flood in the past, in previous years. And we've taken some uh, steps to mitigate that. We have uh, a sump pump uh, that is now functional, a couple of sump pumps that can kick on if the water level gets too high. And we have uh, some French drains and stuff like that that are helping with the with the house. But it still makes me a little nervous just because, you know, I know that it's flooded in the past. So I'm, we're, my husband and I are a little hyper vigilant. We're always checking the sump pump and checking the drains and making sure everything's okay. Everything looks good. So I'm very happy about that. But uh, yeah, we, you know, I don't know if you saw the video that I posted a little bit ago where my sister and I went out in the RV and there was an atmospheric river hitting the coast. Uh, well, and then it went into the valley, but hitting the coast where we were camping and uh, we were supposed to get like three inches overnight or something. And I filmed a tiny little snippet of the aftermath of the storm, like after the storm had already passed, how hard it was still raining the next morning and uh, posted that at the end of the video. Uh, I don't know. you. If you're interested in that one, it's pretty easy to find because uh, the picture of me isn't with the normal like starry background. It has like a, a window behind me because we were in, I actually filmed it in the in the campground. So go look at that, look at the end of that video and you can see how hard it's rained. It rained in that and we've been getting wind and rains pretty much like that here. Um, we've had two more atmospheric river storms hit us since I made that video. So Oregon is, is stacking up on the rain. I, you know, I don't mind it. I hope we get, snow in the mountains and we need that because the snowpack is part of our water that holds us over throughout the summertime and uh, if we don't get enough snow we get drought conditions and that's not good for anybody so fingers crossed the weather will uh, be more helpful than harmful that's that's what i'm hoping for okay so let's see weather is a little wooly i did get out and harvest a couple things in the garden yeah it's december and i'm harvesting out of the garden i pulled carrots which are looking glorious and i pulled parsnips and the parsnips are good. They're probably not the best parsnips, but um, I'll let the ones that are still in the ground stay in the ground a little bit. But I pulled in a nice big bundle of them and cleaned them all up and peeled them and uh, wanted to steam some up for baby food for the baby, the grandbaby. So I did that. I steamed them up and I mashed it up and I uh, took a bite just to see what mashed parsnips taste like because I've never just mashed a parsnip. <laughs> and not put anything in it, like no no salt, no butter, no nothing, just like, here's a parsnip, let's smash it. It was so mild, really, really mild, like the mildest potato, you know, ever. And I like parsnips, but I would never just steamed one and mashed it. And it was, it was actually kind of delicious. So uh, that's good. We're going to, for us grown-ups, we're going to put that into a uh, roast this week, which I think will be delicious. We're going to do a little uh, chicken with some parsnips and some carrots out of the garden in the winter. And that feels really bountiful that we got to um, pull a little more food out of our garden. We certainly do not grow enough food to feed us throughout the year. We just use it as kind of a supplemental uh of fresh vegetables that we can enjoy and I really enjoy having some root vegetables in the winter. I've got to get those beets in because we've got plenty more of those and I would love to can some of those up. So yeah, so the garden was funny as I was out there pulling the parsnips. So I was digging around with my fingers to see where which ones had the biggest tops so I could pull the biggest parsnips and wow that soil is cold. My hands are going numb. That is some cold gardening. And that's why gardening is better in the spring and the summer and the autumn. Winter gardening is very chilly. <laughs> but anyways, I was very happy to uh, get that. And uh, yeah, other than that, I can't think of we're, we're doing holiday things. I've just made probably, I don't know, a couple hundred cookies uh, because I'm going to have a little gathering and I want to have some some homemade cookies. I'm trying some gluten-free cookie recipes because I have a family member who uh, needs gluten-free, so I'm giving it a shot. And um, otherwise, just getting prepped for that little gathering. We went to go see... Um, uh, that play. I don't, I think I talked about it last week, the play that goes wrong. It was super fun. It's at the Pentacle Theater uh, in, it's kind of in Dallas. It's in between Dallas and Salem, uh, 
Oregon and it's a uh, local theater and it was wonderful. This is just my plug for uh, if you get a chance to go to a local play, no matter if it's, you know, high school or middle school or uh, college or professional, your local professionals, go see it. It's amazing. It's a great experience. That live audience experience is always so much fun. And so uh, we got to do that. So we've had we've had a good year so far. Um, I also took some branches off of the bottom of the Christmas tree that we had trimmed off so that the tree would fit in the tree stand. And I made some um, door swags with them. I don't know if you do that, but my grandmother used to do that. Of course, my grandmother was a wonderful gardener and a wonderful florist. She, uh, she competed in the local uh, state fairs and she was and won prizes with her flowers that she grew and arranged. And uh, so she was always making these gorgeous you know, flower displays of whatever kind of greenery was on hand. And so she always made these gorgeous swags out of our Christmas tree boughs, the bottom of Christmas tree boughs. Um, when I was a kid, she would make them and put them on our front door and stuff. And so this year I'm like, I'm gonna give it a shot. And is it as good as what my grandmother did? No, <laughs> not at all. But I thought about her the entire time while I was making it and how she would probably have other ideas of how to make it even more beautiful, like effortlessly, she would probably just stick something in and say, say like, do you like the look of that? It does that look, do you think that's good? And it would, of course, have been beautiful. And um, she would have explained to me how she did it so that I could learn how to do it next time. She's a really good teacher. Um, but I, I made them kind of in the memory of her. And that's another wonderful thing that I love about this time of year is thinking back on family who aren't with us anymore and the wonderful times that you've spent with them. And even thinking about family who maybe you can't be with right now or friends uh, and thinking back on all the, the happy memories. And so uh, doing the swags for the doors brought me a little happy memory of my grandmother. And it was a lovely little winter moment. And it, yes, it was cold. And yes, I was on my front porch. And yes, I had my hair up in one of those, um, what is it called? Like hair cover things like that you wear when you're like, um, when your hair is wet and you put it over the top of your hair and it's plastic. What are those called? Shower caps? Yes, I had a shower cap on. And yes, probably the neighbors were staring at me because my shower cap is polka dots and I was out there in like basically my bathroom. <laughs> squatted over in my front porch poking at greenery i'm sure i look like <laughs> i'm sure i look like a troll which again probably doesn't surprise them at all <laughs> but anyways the the trolling around out there totally created some nice swags so i'm happy for that and uh yeah there's still a little bit of holiday stuff to be done uh, but not like rush, 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 do, do, do. I've got some, a couple gifts to wrap and a few cards to get out in the mail. And I'm still holding on to that idea of happy and cozy and not stressing out about the holiday season. And um, I hope, I hope that you can have that too, that you can have a happy and cozy time of year, that this is our last month before we close out 2023 and we get to start 2024 and hopefully it will be lighter and brighter for us all. I certainly would like that. So that's it. I guess I'm just gonna close this off. I have talked long enough. Um, I will uh, keep you up to date on what's going on at the Patreon. Right now it's Nursery Crimes is going to be shared one chapter a month or one chapter a week and uh, yeah. Uh, keep an eye out for that if you're interested in it. There's a link down below. And that's it, my, my dear friends. Until next time, I hope you have a most wonderful week. Bye for now.